question 21 then, the first of section B of the first paper of the 2014 Higher Maths. Stationary points, curve sketching. This question should be all right. Eight marks. First part, find the coordinates of the stationary points and determine their natures. Well, differentiate. Dy by dx will be multiplied by the power, two threes are six. Take one of the power, drops the power one. Multiply by the power, that'll just be three. Take one of the power, that drops to two. Then, make the statement. Stationary points means you have to have the derivative equal to zero. The gradient must be zero. So that means that you have this equation to solve then. 6x minus 3x squared has to equal zero. So factorise it. Common factors are 3 and x, leaving a 2 minus x. So that will have either 3x equals 0, in which case x is 0, or 2 minus x is 0, in which case x equals 2. Those are the x coordinates of the two stationary points. Of course, all the while you're doing this, you know what that graph looks like. It's an upside down cubic. A cubic graph looks like this. So this one must look like that. So these are the two stationary points, one at 0 and one at 2. Now, but it's coordinates, so you need the y coordinates. Well, if x is 0, that means y will be putting it into that equation. Is it sufficient just to say 0? I think I'll just substitute it all in. Then I can say 0. So that means there's a stationary point at the origin. And if x equals 2, that means y will be putting it back into the coordinate equation, 3 times 2 squared minus 2 cubed, 2 squared is 4, 3 fours are 12, 2 cubed is 8, so that comes to 4, so that means you've got the point 2, 4. So, so far, there are the coordinates of the stationary points. Now, what's their nature? Use a nature table for that. It's not the only way, because they'll also accept the second derivative. The second derivative would actually be quicker in this case. Maybe I'll do it just after this. Well, what happens is there's a stationary point at 0, there's a stationary point at 2, and you consider what happens either side of those. Now, strictly speaking, it's a continuous curve. Whatever happens when it's leaving the stationary point at 0 continues to happen all the way to 2. There's no need for neighbourhoods in this particular type of case. But then again, most of you just use neighbourhoods and then ignore me in neighbourhoods just by putting the same value in between them. Well, you can either pick numbers to evaluate, which is what you probably do these days, or you could just consider this is still an expression for the derivative. In solving this equation, I didn't divide anything. That's still the original expression. So this expression, if I evaluate this expression, I'll get the answers I need. And it's only the sign that I want. So if I work out what the 3x part factor comes to, and the 2 minus x factor comes to, multiplying them will give me the sign of the result. This used to be called, it didn't used to be called, this is called a table of signs. It just seems to have disappeared from schools somehow. Well, when x is 0, 3x is 0, and when x is less than 0, even a slight bit less, it's negative, and anything beyond it's positive. So that tells me what this factor is. 2 minus x, well, at 2, it's 0. Now, 2 minus x is actually a decreasing term, which means before that, I'll have greater values. Take away a negative will give me positive values before, and then a negative afterwards. So multiplying those two together would multiply using these signs. One negative makes a negative, that's 0, that's positive, that's 0, and that's a negative again. Down, along, up, along, down. But you probably got those signs just by picking numbers to put in and putting into that expression. So this is a minimum turning point and this is a maximum turning point. The other way you could have done it is by taking the second derivative that's still allowed in the higher. You certainly do it elsewhere. The second derivative just means differentiate it again. Differentiating that again would give you 6 minus 2 times 3 is 6x. And then all you'd have to do is put in the x values of these. So if x was 0, the second derivative would have a value of 6. And if x was 2, the second derivative, that's a wee bit of a scroll, would be 6 minus 12, which is negative 6. And a positive value for the second derivative means the gradient is increasing. 
you'll see this later on with acceleration and distance. Acceleration means you're speeding up, the gradients are increasing. And a negative second derivative means it's slowing down. So a positive derivative means a positive second derivative means it's a minimum, and a negative means it's a maximum. You can also do that, but you've probably done your table of signs. But no matter what you did, finish it off by saying there's a minimum, probably as well to write it all out. Now I've called it a turning point, but it said stationary point, but I still, I'll still call it a turning point. Minimum turning point at zero, zero, and a maximum turning point at two, four. Put that up there. Now, B. State the coordinates of points where the curve meets the coordinate axis and sketch the curve. Because that's all you need to sketch the curve. All the important points. Where does it cross the axis and where does it take any turns or twists? Well, standard. It crosses the y-axis when x is 0. So putting x into that means y is 0. We had that already. So that's the origin. It crosses the x-axis when y is 0. So that means you've got 3x squared minus x cubed is 0. <clears throat> Factorise that by taking out an x squared. So x squared times 3 minus x is 0. So that gives you the answers x equals 0. But notice that's happening twice. That's a double root. So when it crosses this x-axis at x equals 0, it won't cross. This must be a tangent there. So that'll be a turning point. That's something you would know without differentiating. Or, if this part is 0, x is 3. Whoops. So x equals 0 merely repeats that one. I'll put it down again. But x equals 3 gives you a new one, 3, 0. So it's just a case of putting this all together. It crosses the axis at these points. That's just the same as that. And it's got to take turns at those points. To sketch the curve, you put all that together. So it crosses the axis at the origin, 0, 0. It crosses again at 3. It's got a turning point at 2, 4. It's got a turning point at 0, 0. So you could put those in. That's the point 2, 4. And that's all there really is to the graph. So the graph goes through those points. So it comes down for a turn, goes up for a turn, and then carries on back down. That's the graph of y equals 3x squared minus x cubed. Just put in the x's and y's to make sure. And the only significant points are the 0, the 3, and the point 2, 4. And I'm sure that's all you need to do nowadays. It used to be when you had a loose waggling tail, like this part here. For instance, this part when it leaves the 3, because it was defined by these two points, more or less determine the direction it's heading in. But this part here where it leaves the 0 could actually waggle about. And it used to be that you would have to find an extra point to pin it down here to see exactly at what kind of angle it was heading off at. But this is just the two marks, and nowadays it seems that it's sufficient just to do that. Show the turning points, and show where it crosses the axis. There, 21.